attention, Sealum. It is time for the negotiation video. You must now go into the Bate safe and sell five of your beloved players. I'm a businessman. Let's do it. Hey, my name is Zealand, and this is YouTube. Welcome. So there's a lot of fun rebranding stuff going on around the channel. I'll direct you to the community tab on the channel page for more information on that. And the reason I'm not just telling you it right now is because I'm not quite sure when this video is coming out exactly. And that's because I'm making it with you. See, we've done this competition that you may have noticed in recent YouTube videos. And if you watch the Twitch stream, which is linked down below, if you want to check it out, uh, where I'm on live four days a week, I was talking about it there too. We did this post on the Instagram where it was five players from my Bate save. And you had to guess what they sold for. I'm going to go through. I haven't actually sold them yet, but you had to guess what they sold for. And if you got them right, you got to be on this video. And while we're loading in, there were five players and... The chest hair's a little too much out. There were five players that I decided we were going to sell because there were five, you know, different kinds of players. Those five players are as follows. Marino Rios. Guy's been loaned out a bunch of times. I've struggled to sell him in the past when I was actually playing through the game, but he's a Colombian national and should be able to fetch a pretty penny. So let's see what kind of deal we might be able to strike for him. The next one is Luis Alfonso Londoño. He's arguably the best left back in the world. I'll be getting offers upwards of 40 million for him, unprompted trying to pry him away. I'm gonna see how high I can push that if I'm actively trying to sell him. He's a star. Third is legend of the Champions League final goalkeeper, Ali Shahid. He's a starter on a Champions League winning team, but he's not considered a world-class player. He really doesn't have the foot skills to be a traditional world-class goalkeeper at a big club and as thus he's only received offers of up to 3.5 to 4 million before i've started to offer him out our fourth man is homegrown hero dennis kozlov who's very hard to find when you don't know the alphabet like me but we found dennis kozlov he is a very good striker but a striker that despite a borderline world-class skill set is receiving offers of 3.5 to 4 million for him so this is our underrated guy and the last one is somebody you probably haven't heard of, a guy named Nico. Now, this is a bench riding, talented, but bench riding player who barely breaks into the first team. And we're at a club that's not very good. So I'm interested to see, honestly, this is the most curious one for me. How much can I sell him for? Time to sell our boys. That sounds normal. Who's the first one on the chopping block? It's Ali Shahid. So the first thing I do is you notice there's no transfer status, there's no loan status. I've got a set asking price, but I'll go ahead and remove it. When I want to sell somebody and I feel like I might be able to get a good amount of money for them, maybe I just want to see the amount of money I'm going to get for them. You go on specified, click offer to clubs, and this is going to give you a baseline of interest and people that are willing to put money on the table right now to try and sign somebody. The second person is going to be Dennis Kozlov, who just like Ali Shahid has been receiving offers for three to four million for his services, just from every club under the face of the earth. Our third boy is Londonio, who's been receiving massive offers of over 40 million for his services. Then we have Nico, who has not been receiving any interest, really, and we're just gonna go ahead and offer him out. I set the asking price at 30 million, just so in case you know, everything was kind of erased. And our last guy is one of the more confusing people I've ever attempted to sell. That's Marino Rios. And we've got to offer this guy out at Unspecified. He's also got a transfer right now that he's considering. So we got to get rid of it. He was about to be loaned out again. So we've erased that showtime. Now, you do not want to do the offer out to other clubs tactic with somebody that you know has a ton of love and loyalty for the club and has a lot of influence inside of the dressing room because that could put you at a huge huge disadvantage in the locker room atmosphere because obviously Dennis Kozlov's gone straight down to abysmal. He clearly does not want to leave, but I'm going to go ahead uh, and just really antagonize him for the sake of this experiment. We've got one offer in for Ali Shahid, and that's 2.5 million. And you notice the rest of these guys really had no problem with me shopping them out. So the offer for 2.5 million, 
I'm now going to step this up to, let's just double that. Let's say 5 million. Kozlov's offers have come in from everywhere from 11 million to 725,000 for Monaco. Come on. I know you have the money, Monaco. Go to the bottom, just reject them all. And now I'm gonna start to offer them out for significant amounts of money. So let's just double that and say 22 and a half. Which one of you clubs wants to step up to the plate? We've got the same situation with Londonio, 28 and a half. So you already know that they have more money than that. I've gotten offers for 44 million for him. So let's just go all the way up to 45 and see if we get any takers. On Nico, a pretty solid amount of interest. We've got a bunch of clubs at 2.2 million. Let's see if we can get a couple that might take just for the sake of easy clicking, say 7.5. The only one that we didn't get a response for yet was Rios, but that could be a little weird with me denying the loan today uh, and a lot of different things could be going on there. A few moments later. So we've got a bunch of offers for 22 and a half. Awesome. That's Kozlov. We've continued to push it along. And now let's go up to Kozlov and we'll keep offering out. You saw there were a few offers in there for like 6 million, even though I asked for 22. Those are just people trying to take advantage and be cheapskates. Let's go up to 35. If you want to remove that, you can just click this lock. Then it'll lock in the offer and they have to match it or you won't get the offer at all. Uh, and we looks like we need to do that too. We've got Gank that are in for 45 million on Londonio. And now we get to play the game where we see how high Gink is willing to go. How about 60? Nico's got four teams as well. Three in Brazil. This man's an adventurer. So let's try 11. That's the next step on this ladder. 11.25. Who wants Nico? Oh no, Shahid. What happened? That's no good. We doubled it up and we didn't get any offers. It looks like there's really not a lot of interest in him. It's a new day, it's a new dawn. We're gonna get a lot of money for Dennis Kozlov. That's a lot of teams. Let's see if we can get them up to 55. 35 to 55 is a pretty significant job. Okay, Gink. How? You have this much money. I mean, really, how is Gink the team that's like, yes, we will spend 60 million on a left back, but will you spend I don't know. I don't want to go up to 90, 75. Ka I mean, shoot. Kozlov and Londonio are the cool kids. Londonio just got 75 from Gank. And this gets to the point where you can start pushing your luck a little bit. Now, obviously, if they're offering 75 now, they'd probably be willing to offer 75 later, but you don't know that for sure. Once you get up to that much higher than what you were getting before, we really kind of doubled what we were getting. Go 70 on Kozlov. We got multiple for 70 million. You know what the original offer we got was? 11. When we offered them out initially. 11. There's no way, right? There's no way we hit 90 million. Uh, <laughs> there's definitely a way. For sure. Absolutely. There's a way. That's not the offer I asked for. So we went up to 90, right? We went up 20 million and then we ended up with absolutely nothing. So let's walk this down to 80. There we go. So Londonio, Shahid, Rios, Nico. So we've now reached the point where they're no longer interested. Let's try 70 or 80. We got them at 75. We should be able to get them to 80. That's a nice round number. Super surprised by Ali Shahid. 4 million. We're going to go back to unspecified just to make sure somebody is still interested. Remember, we offered Rio House, Rios out for nothing. We offered him out unspecified and nobody said anything. 11's a little too high for Nico. What about 10? What about 10 million? Look at me. I'm using the space bar. Oh. We got it. We got 80 million. Maybe 85? I mean, we're, we're dancing for 5 million here. Let's try for 85. We might not be able to sell Ali Shahid for more than 2.5 million. That's a bit of an embarrassment. I'm super, super surprised. Let's try 3.2. I mean, does Olympia, it's not like the Greek League has a lot of money. We don't have offers. I mean, 3.2, they're in. So 3.2, they said yes. Four is apparently like way too high. I'm not ready to accept that. How is four too high? I mean, 3.8, how high can we go here? All right, 85 is a no. Let's get Kozlov for 80. So that's our first negotiation done. Let's give me 82. 
Give me 82 million. I'm gonna get greedy. I'm this number's gonna hang over me for a long time for how well we did trying to sell these guys. You give me 77 for Londonio. Every million matters. I feel like we might be able to squeeze a little more out of them. Just a little bit. Ooh, offers in. It won't go 85. 82, though. Both teams in. You know the mistake I might have made? Is we didn't lock it. They'll go 85. They'll go 87. They probably won't. 77 looks like the best we can do here. So we're going to take 77 million for Luis Alfonso Londonio. We finished our first one. He's off. Then the other three players we're still working on. So Ali Shahid, uh, this is in a rather shocking affair. He's only available for 3.5. And for whatever reason, we can't get Lazio involved in the bidding. Only Olympiaco seems to have brought its purse at the beginning of this transfer window. And that's a shame. And typically what I would do is you stay more patient if you have to sell Shahid because he wants to leave or if you just really need the money but you know that you're not getting a true value for a player. I mean, it's just starting goalkeeper for the Champions League winner for 3.5 million. I would wait for the sake of this video and competition, though we're going. We Gotta take the offer that we can negotiate to right now. We got no offers for Marino Rios for 3.8. He's a starting striker for the Colombian national team. We got no offers for him. Let's try nine on Nico. Because we got a bunch of we got a bunch of clubs at 7.5. Everybody thinks they can get Marino Rios on loan. Maybe if I get him out of that, 3.5 is what we're gonna get. We've tried it multiple times. I would recommend patience in this situation normally, but Ali Shahid, 3.5 million to Olympiacos. Do I have Rios on the loan list? I do. Let's try this again. He's unavailable for loan. I'm gonna offer him out for 2.5 million. That might have been a key mistake and a good lesson to teach there. So we are one for five so far. In two days, we did produce 77 million for a guy whose top offer had been 44. And Kozlov, we're gonna get a lot of money from. Shahid, we're not. Nico is gonna sell somehow more for more than a regular starter. I feel like goalkeepers might be more heavily affected by rep the reputation of the league. And that might be something that's worth thinking about. Okay, so Kozlov, you're telling me you got two clubs that went in on 82 million and nobody's stepping up to 87. That's what you're telling me. No offers for three players. So our other three, I mean, Rios, now he's not available for loan. If you want this, like, what can we sell Rios for? Such an unbelievable example of how important hype is. If you get that hype going and you see it, you see it happen, especially with Kozlov, where the, we were receiving $4 million offers for Kozlov before we started doing this. That When that hype train gets going, it makes that's when the negotiation is worth it. And all of a sudden we get a $1.5 million offer for Rios, a great player. He's not quite good enough to play on my team, which is why he's been loaned out a couple of times, but he's a great player. This is high pressure. Marino Rios for 1.5. This is another one I'd recommend being patient on, but to be honest, I tried to sell him last year and I was getting a pretty similar amount of money offered. So when you get to this point, you either need to sell or you can exercise patience. And I think we're going to go back to 7.5 on Nico. And I think Denis Kozlov, we're going to go to 83 and lock it in and we're going to get an offer right around there. And Ali Shahid's already in the books, sadly, at under 4 million. So goalkeepers are harder to sell out of small leagues. That's worth noting for developmental purposes. They won't offer eight. Everybody's in on 7.5. So we'll take that. Except for this one, that's 2.3. Don't be an idiot like me. 83 million Shalka. That's our deal for Denis Kozlov. And now we've got one more player out. It's Marino Rios. And no offers for Rios. He gives us information. It's thought to be high, a lot of interest. He would prefer a move to Sevilla. He's actually been on loan to there before. His value is set at exactly 1.5 million, and it looks like that's the offer that they're going to want to have, you know? That's a shame. So we've seen the good side of the negotiations. We've seen the types of negotiations that after they happen and there's just there's no competition for signatures. 
uh, and you just got to leave it like Ali Shahid and Rios. Or there's the type of negotiation where it's Nico and there's teams that are interested, but they just have a hard line in their mind. And once you try and go above 7.5, they just go, yeah, no, I'm not feeling it. So that's our last deals. Marino Rios for 1.5 million to Valencia. And the best that we could negotiate at the time. So one of my takeaways before we run the competition? Well, I think that form, perception have a lot more to do with what you're going to get for a player than their actual ability. Now, something that's important to note is that I'm operating out of the Belarusian League here. So the reputation of the league itself is going to nerf the value of the player but it obviously doesn't nerf the amount that they're willing to spend with Londonio and Kozlov going for over 75 million uh, when their values were obviously below 10 just because of the league that they were in. Now, Ali Shahid is a very good player, a regular starter on my team, but because he's a goalkeeper in a bad league, apparently he is aggressively devalued uh, more so than Kozlov and more so than Londonio in the eyes of the rest of the world. He's also not quite as good, but he's certainly worth more than one twentieth, or whatever the math ends up being, of Kozlov. Marino Rios being sold a few years ago for maybe over 10 million would have been a good idea. Wearing somebody down on loans just to try to sell them does not seem particularly effective as an approach in this game. And someone like Nico not getting any first team time obviously hurts his value because they, he's just unproven. So maybe give him one loan or rotate him into the first team even more so that his form will pick up or that he has any documentable form at all. But if you're one of the better teams in your league, that kind of rotation can help you sell for value later on. But now it's time to head into the future because one of you went onto Instagram, looked at these five players and appropriately guessed closer than anybody else to the nearest million how much these players sold for. I'm going to ask them how they did it. I'm kind of looking forward to it. You only have to wait like five more seconds. I have to wait like a week and a half. See you on the other side. Time capsule. Activate. Are we in the future? Do we have a winner? We do have a winner. His name is Jason Lee Saunderson. His Instagram was set up by his daughter, by the way, which I think is absolutely hilarious. The floor is yours. How did you get essentially five out of six of these closer than basically anybody? Okay, so I look first at the age. So you're looking at potential and how they're going to move forward and, you know, what the big clubs are going to go for. Uh, I look at the attributes, you know, you know, are they look to improve the determination, uh, all their sort of strengths and abilities from that side of it um because i don't know when you sold those players because i was assuming they may not have been sold at that point of their career but maybe later on after they'd already improved so i tried to do that plus their current value i looked at again the potential growth for each player really um and then i uh, sort of tried to ascertain the, by position likelihood of you know what the big clubs are going to pay um so i know you're you, you know you've done previous videos and i know you try and get the best for each player so <laughs> i should have gone higher to be fair, um, and to be fair, with Kosov, I was going to go 82 million initially. I really was, and then I was like, nah, nah, because of Barte, I know it's not a strong league, but you obviously improved the reputation over the years. You know, that's why I went a little bit lower. But yeah, that's my sort of thinking. You would have been deified if you have gone 82 million because he sold for 83. You would have been yeah. right next to it. I mean, you already <laughs> won, obviously. You would have been yeah. right next to it. Thank you so much for for participating, and uh, I'm think this. I know this is super random in your life for this to just happen, mm -hmm. but I appreciate you being so game to just get on a Discord call and talk about it. But uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll stay in touch. This was kind of fun. I might bring you back yeah. on for something. <laughs> no, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I'd love to do something like that. I say I watch uh, I watch all the streamers showdowns. Well done on that, by the way. Yes. You know, just the heads to you, you know, going to your name like Lou Lujo, you know, I think it's important, you know, get your own brand out there. So, yeah, you know, good luck with everything you do, mate. Well, I've got to be honest, that was probably one of the more fun things. Why am I still wearing these that I've ever done on this channel? Just get to interview this random guy about why he was right. 
more so than everybody else. But thank you everybody else for participating. And we're definitely gonna do some sort of other challenge where you can end up on a Zealand video at some point. Obviously we, the logistics were a bit complicated. Uh, we hadn't quite figured out how we wanted to do that, but I knew I wanted to get his, not just his voice, but his face up there too, as the champion, the guy that knew what everybody else didn't, which is how much Nico cost. So I hope you've learned a lot from this video and it's been a lot of fun to make. Enjoy the New Zealand aesthetic. I gotta go shave or something. All the balls in the go. What's happened for Timo Courtois? Oh! Oh, it's a cataclysm for Belgium. It's personally the worst goal I've seen by a goalkeeper in Football Manager 20.